Hey, it's Mr. Shrum, and I'll pick up where I left off. And we were just about to get into menstruation and pregnancy. So here we go. At birth, a girl has about 2 million immature sex cells called oocytes in her ovaries. And each one of these lies in a sac-like structure called a follicle. At puberty, hormones cause the first set of follicles to develop and the oocytes within uh, mature into an egg. Uh, in anticipation that the egg will be fertilized, the uterus lining thickens. If the egg is not fertilized, the body discards this lining. This process called the menstrual cycle occurs once every month. The first menstruation signals the start of a woman's reproductive years. The average cycle lasts 28 days, but it varies from woman to woman. The menstrual cycle is the process of maturing an egg for possible fertilization by sperm. After fertilization, if the fertilized egg implants into the uterine wall, it results in pregnancy. During pregnancy, the fertilized egg develops into a baby. So here we have days one, seven, 14, 21, and 28. And it shows you the life cycle of that. The menstrual cycle. So we have flow phase or menstruation. The first day of the cycle is when the menstrual flow begins. In this phase, the uterus sheds blood, tissue fluids, and epithelial cells from the endometrium, which is the lining of the uterus. The lining is important because in a pregnant woman, it provides the embryo, the developing fertilized egg, with oxygen and nutrients from her bloodstream. The menstrual flow lasts about three to five days on average. After the flow ends, the lining begins to form again. Then we move into the follicular phase, and that begins with the repair of the endometrium. At the start of the cycle, the levels of estrogen are low. These low levels of estrogen cause the pituitary gland to release more FSH and LH into the body. The release of these hormones stimulate uh, follicles in the ovary to develop and the oocytes uh, within them to mature. FSH and LH stimulate the oocyte. Oocytes produce estrogen and some progesterone. The oocyte to produce, oops, sorry about that to produce estrogen and some progesterone. The rising level of estrogen has a negative feedback mechanism on FSH and reduces its production. The drop in FSH limits the number of follicles that develop. Gradually, one follicle in one ovary becomes dominant and survives while the others die. The dominant follicle continues to produce estrogen. Around day 12, the high levels of estrogen cause the LH levels to shoot up rapidly. And this rapid increase in LH causes the follicle to rupture. The ovulation phase. After the follicle ruptures, the mature egg leaves the ovary and travels down the fallopian tube. During the ovulation phase, the cervix secretes thick mucus. This mucus helps nourish the sperm and help it on its journey toward the egg. Fertilization usually happens in the fallopian tube. If a sperm does not fertilize the egg, it travels to the uterus. The luteal phase begins when the follicle ruptures and releases the egg. After ovulation, the follicle becomes a structure called the corpus luteum. 
and this produces a lot of progesterone and estrogen. The hormones keep the LH and the FSH at low levels and prevent new follicles from developing. Progesterone stimulates the uterus to maintain the endometrium. If the egg is not fertilized, it passes into the uterus. By around day 25, the corpus luteum begins to break down. Progesterone and estrogen levels drop. This triggers the shedding of the endometrial lining and the flow phase begins once again. As sperm fertilizes the mature egg, it attaches to the lining of the uterus. The corpus luteum persists and continues to produce progesterone, which maintains the endometrium. All right, so question. Most women experience their final menstrual cycle around age 51. The seizing of the menstrual cycle is called menopause and it signals the end of a woman's reproductive years. It's triggered by a change in hormone levels and a decline in oocytes. Doctors can perform a test to check a woman's hormone levels to determine if menopause has occurred. If the woman is in menopause, the test will reveal high FSH levels and low estrogen levels. How could a decline in the number of oocytes contribute to this change in hormones? Well, these produce estrogen. So when there are fewer oocytes, it will lead to a drop in estrogen levels in the blood. Estrogen and FSH work on a negative feedback mechanism. FSH is one of the hormones that control the release of estrogen if estrogen is naturally dropping near menopause, it will trigger the release of more FSH, which will lead to higher levels of FSH in the blood. Fertilization and pregnancy. The menstrual cycle is a process by which the female reproductive system prepares itself for fertilization. Fertilization is the process of the sperm joining with the egg, which has matured during the menstrual cycle. In humans, the egg and sperm each contain half the genetic information of a full human being. About 300 million sperm are released during ejaculation. The sperm enter through the vagina and can survive up to 48 hours, 48 hours, in a woman's reproductive system. After ovulation, an egg survives for only 24 hours. That leaves a short window of time for fertilization. Additionally, a woman's cycle can change month to month, so ovulation can be difficult to predict. Of the large number of sperm deposited, very few reach the egg. The woman's white blood cells destroy many sperm. Sperm penetrate the egg with the help of specialized lysosomes called acrosomes. These acrosomes contain digestive enzymes that dissolve the plasma membrane, enabling the sperm to enter the egg. Only one sperm can fertilize the egg. As soon as a sperm enters an egg, the egg forms a barrier to prevent other sperm from entering. Fertilization usually happens in the fallopian tube. The fertilized egg then travels down the tube to the uterus. The fertilized egg attaches to the endometrial lining of the uterus. After implantation in the uterus, the fertilized egg begins to grow and develop into a baby. As the baby grows, the uterus expands. Occasionally, the process of fertilization occurs differently leading to a multiple birth, such as twins. Twins can form when two eggs are released and two different sperm fertilize them. Twins that form in this way are called fraternal twins. Twins can also form when a fertilized egg divides in two and each develops into an embryo. 
These twins are identical twins. Now we have a lesson activity, ectopic pregnancy. So um, we have several models showing what ectopic uh, pregnancy is. That is when a fertilized egg implants into a structure other than the uterine lining. So here we go. Open a new tab, let me close this meeting control. So here's model one, types of ectopic pregnancy, interstitial, ithmic, ismic, uh, ampullary, abdominal, cervical, ovarian, fimbrial. And here's the female reproductive system overall. So using this model, we're going to answer these questions. So in the initial days of pregnancy, a woman often feels no symptoms at all. Women with ectopic uh, pregnancies often experience severe pain in the lower abdomen. They may experience digestive discomfort. Use the model to explain why these symptoms occur. Well, if you go back to those models, um, a fertilized egg develops in a region other than the uterus. These areas are not designed to expand like the uterus. So the growing embryo will put stress on the tissue causing pain. Also in model two, it shows that the female reproductive system is close to the lower part of the digestive system. And the growing embryo could press against these organs and tissues causing digestive distress. Why do you think some uh, ectopic pregnancy locations are more common than others? The fallopian tube is the most likely place for implantation. That is the natural path of travel for the sperm. Um, the different region, regions other than the fallopian tube suggest that the egg gets implanted immediately after fertilization. So abdominal pregnancy is especially unusual because that is not a normal path for the fertilized egg to take. The cervical pregnancy looks like the fertilized egg transplanted much farther down than normal. Part C, this can be life-threatening for women and they may require quick surgical intervention. And in most cases, the fertilized egg cannot be saved. Why do you think these risk, risks exist with this type of pregnancy? If the baby continued to grow in any region besides the uterus, it will eventually burst the structure, such as the fallopian tube, the developing baby may also press against other structures, interfering with their function. For this reason, it is necessary to remove the fertilized egg from the mother. Part D, cervical pregnancies are very rare. Women undergoing cervical pregnancies often experience unusual uh, vaginal bleeding. In extreme cases, uh, they may require a hysterectomy or the removal of the uterus altogether. Why do you think symptoms and risk occur with this type of ectopic pregnancy? Bleeding would occur because the baby is growing near the vaginal canal. That leads to the outside of the body. The cervix is the bottom portion of the uterus. So if the uterus is damaged, the entire uterus may need to be removed. Now, I'll come back to finish the growth and development of the embryo section. But until then, uh, stay safe, uh, have a good rest of your day, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.